we were talking about the future of cannabis in, a, in an uncertain political time and the concerns that I have for people, particularly those who are returning citizens, to be able to meaningfully access this industry uh, once we are in a new regime. Uh, so give us a sense as to your, your reading of the tea leaves, and then we'll take some calls as well as folks are still sort of responding uh, to what has happened electorally. Uh, so we're going to incorporate all of that into the conversation. So, so any, any thoughts that you have on those topics? Yeah, well, you know, first and foremost, you know, we, the cannabis industry is, makes up less than 3% of minorities. Oh, dang. A lot of people don't understand that. And most states, right now, Illinois, I think I was just told 65% of the social equity license are about to be given back. So these are licenses that people who are from communities negatively impacted from cannabis got, but 60% of them have to be returned. Because they don't have funding. My God. So, Lori, you knew... Oh, it's Lori. It's, it's more Lurie. like Marie, but with an L, yeah. Lori. My apologies. No, no, we, it, it happens we... literally every day. That's why I have a nifty little way of explaining <laughs> it to people how to say it. Literally, so, that's why I say it's like uh, Marie, but with an L. That's literally how I describe it now. Lori. <laughs> yes. What what has happened is, is you know, um, Puffy, Jay-Z, all these people came out. We're going to help people of color get money. And they mm -hmm. found out that the fed there was no federal backing behind this. Right. And all of a sudden, people started to backstep. So if I had a, a real estate and business background, had I not known how to go out and raise money and get people to believe in me and my vision, and I opened a store doing COVID. Right. So the wow. supply chain, and I put wow. $1.8 million rehabbing a business. Mm. But I also had people believe in the vision and understand that, hey, I've done this on a different level. So, but when you, talk to people who've come home, they've been gone 15, 20 years. Mm. That's a different conversation. Right. If they don't have any money, they don't have, and it's just not the money. It's about the resources, mm. accountants, lawyers, mentors. And one thing that we lack in the cannabis space is mentors, because you got to realize that it's still, it's not real estate where it's a mature industry. The trees are still being planted. The roads are still being paved in this right. industry. Right. We're still building an infrastructure in, a, in the industry and there's no banking, as you mentioned. Mm. So if somebody goes and file, you can't file bankrupt. You can't, no bankruptcy in cannabis. Wow. So as a business owner and also as an investor, someone who's invested in numerous of things and been in hundreds of deals, you're taking a gamble on yourself. Mm. So to do this and then what comes after that when you open the doors, the marketing, understanding, getting people to say, even in a legacy market like DC, where I was, a, I didn't have a license. I came in as a, a I-71 in an illicit market. So now you really got to get somebody to believe in you. Mm. So the hurdles for people who come home, who don't have resources, who don't have money, and then you're fighting with an industry that's less than 3% that look like you. Wow. Forget the return citizen thing, wow. but we're talking about an industry that's made up of less than 3% that look like you. And when I went to California and sat down with Kiki Davis, and I know you've heard of Kiki, mm -hmm. who fought the city of uh, Los Angeles um, to get social equity. Um, as you go into Denver and into Chicago and all these people who fought for something, you see that the government, the state, local government has failed them. Wow. So they settled. Mm. And mm -hmm. I've had conversations from Kiki to the real Rick Ross to Marlon um, Starlins, mm. all these guys or people that were in the business fighting for something. 
some are still in the business. Some are, yeah. or have said, I'm, I'm, I'm a bow gracefully. Mm. Wow. So, um, Ooh. you know, when you are already a, a person of color and these disparities that has already been presented, especially a man, there's one thing. And I don't get caught up in the white black thing. I get caught up in the people thing. Hmm. But when you see a return citizen, whether he's black, white, green, or yellow, that's a different type of strike. Right. Because social equity is one thing, but if you don't have justice and, and reciprocity, what what is equity? Nothing. Mm. So, and that I think is a model for what we're going to see that what you are describing, I think is going to be replicated in every single industry where black people are trying to get a toehold people. And, and I will say people of color, even though I know that phrase is very sensitive for a lot of us right now in light of well, how people voted, but it, we're going to see that sort of abandonment. Well, they already lack told of investment. you that. That's right. They already told right. you that the DEI thing is out, out the door. With a full chest. They said it with no hesitation. It's out now, the let's door. Get some, yeah, let's get some calls on the line uh, as folks are, are still grappling with what you've talked about and what we're all navigating in this new era. Uh, let's go to Parrish in New Jersey. Uh, thank you for calling Parrish. What are your thoughts this morning? Hey, Louie, I'm a returning citizen. I did 17 years in prison. Mm. So this this whole election affects me in so many ways. And at the moment, I'm disabled, so I'm living in a nursing home in mm. mag country so yesterday was rough <laughs> wow you said a nursing home in maga country my god we, we were all praying for you mm. yeah i had a stroke so i i've been disabled for the last couple of years so mm. i sit in a unique spot so i've been in slavery now i'm sitting in a place where mm. people are preparing to die oh, wait wait a minute parish i'm sorry i just want to pause you for one second sir you said something that just my heart just leaped when you or lurched when you said that you said so you've been in slavery and that yes. is fundamentally what we are talking about when we're talking about that loophole in the 13th amendment that allows for slave labor in the incarcerated Absolutely. space Absolutely. that statement means so much more today than it would have on any other day go go right Absolutely. ahead sir that's why i made <laughs> mm. and, and now i'm in a place where people are preparing to die and i'm refusing to die Mm. So I'm like in a, a unique spot, you know, and I'm going to tell you, Urban View has been one of those bright spots. And of course, Karen Hunter and Dr. Carr, I spend most of my time reading and Animal SSI. So all I get is $50 a month. So every extra dollar I get, I, I spend on books, you know, to try mm. to recruit my mind active, you know? Yeah. Yeah, you guys mean so much to me. I, I I listen to you, and let me tell you, Sister Larie, that interview you had the other day with Gary Chambers is <laughs> go back and listen to that. That strategy he had is the strategy going forward. Mr. Parrish, I agree with you. I hear you, and we love you, brother. Thank you so much for calling. Stay safe out there in a nursing home in MAGA country. Y'all, y'all, just like we pray for Miss Alpha, y'all, we better pray for Mr. Parrish. Keep our folks safe. And and Terrence, you know, he raises something. That, that phrase, I've already been in slavery. <laughs> that mm -hmm. that phrase, had he said it before the election, might have meant some, it would have meant the same thing, but it would have hit a little bit differently. The idea of enslavement as a viable practice when you are incarcerated. I, is that something that was reflected in your experience as well or the experience yeah, you deserve with others? Yeah, I mean, you, you got to remember in federal prison, that number that you wear is traded on the NASDAQ every day. Jesus. So a lot of people don't understand that. That's why they said federal prisons are bonded. Mm. There's a bond on you. And a lot of people um, don't understand how the federal system works. Um, that's why everything that attach is a dollar. It's commerce. Wow. So every time they, that's why they always, a, a crime equate, uh, equates to a dollar amount. My that's how God. they find you. That's how <laughs> they penalize you. So a lot of times people don't understand how this system was set up. It's, a, it's, like, it's Jim Crow. 
So they, they might pay you two dollars a day to work, you know, on the compound to clean up. So uh, you know, you might make, you know, thirty, forty dollars a month. That's that's what they feel like as though as long as they're housing you and feeding you, um, that's what that equates to. So it's it's just modern day slavery. Yeah.